Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the AMD Athlon A4-7300, which is a dual core that is paired with the MSI A68HM grenade motherboard. But before we get into this, I'm going to show you a preview to a build over on Basement Builder's PC. So please check this small clip out. I will not tell you to subscribe, however, at this point he only has 36 subscribers and I would like him to have a larger fan base. Hit the clip. Hey guys, it's Jack here from Basin Dweller PCs, and today I'm going to be going over my $150 build. You may find a link in the description to the full video if you're interested. Now, I'm well aware the CPU is going on two years from its release date, but is it capable of still running today's games? Or not is it still, because it, I don't think it has been. Is it capable of running today's games? And to go along with this processor, I have this motherboard. I bought them as a combo for about $85 with a $10 mail-in rebate. I actually forgot to mail in, so it was $85, okay. We're gonna be looking at benchmarks with this processor and its onboard graphics, and then pair this with a GTX 970 to see exactly how terrible the bottleneck is. And then I'll compare it to the G3258 clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. And then we can also compare the 4600 graphics to the 8470D and this. But wait, you may say. The G3258 has 4000 graphics, not 4600 graphics, you idiot. Good eye. And also that, that hurt. We're disguising our i5 by dropping two processing cores and changing the clock speed because I actually don't have the Pentium on me anymore. Let's begin. This is a dual core based on the 32 nanometer Rechlin architecture, which actually is the same architecture as the Athlon X4 uh, 760K. Nope, not the popular X4 860K. Clocked at 3.8 gigahertz that can turbo to 4 gigahertz when thermal and power limitations allow it to, but with only a 65 watt TDP, it shouldn't be getting too hot. Which actually, I wrote this before I actually tested that, and um, I think I got to like 92 degrees Celsius when running Cinebench, so um, yeah, problem. Oh, I was using a stock fan also, that might be an issue. Also, it has one megabyte of L2 cache, which isn't actually exciting at all. Also note, this APU, or Advanced Processing Unit, or Accelerated Processing Unit, has 8470D graphics clocked at 800 megahertz, while fitting the FM2 and the FM2 Plus motherboards. To accompany here, we have the MSI A68HM Grenade motherboard. This is a micro ATX board that can fit FM2 or FM2 Plus motherboards. Note this is an FM2 Plus board. FM2 boards will not support FM2 Plus processors, but FM2 Plus boards can fit FM2 and FM2 Plus CPUs. So there are two DIMMs that can contain up to 32 gigabytes of 2.133 gigahertz DDR3 memory. We have a PCI Express X16 Gen 3 slot, a PCI Express X1 Gen 2 slot, and a PCI slot, so that's not super exciting either. Also, there's four six gigabit per second SATA ports that can actually be in a RAID 0, 1, and 10 for redundant re uses. Also on this board we have a USB 3.0 for your front I.O. on your case. Oh, and for your I.O., my usually my favorite part, we have legacy, some legacy PS2 ports for your mouse and keyboard, old school stuff. Four USB 2.0 ports, VGA, DVI, HDMI, two USB 3.0 ports, and your basic three audio ports. And then all of that aside, this is my favorite feature. Red LEDs in the back. So BA. As far as benchmarks go, we tested Minecraft, Tomb Raider, Shadow of Mordor, and Fallout 4 using this processor and also my G3258i5 simulated whatever using 8 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz RAM. Note that on an APU, faster RAM will make a difference for the dedicated GPU in there. One thing I must point out, something really weird, is that with this processor on CPU-Z, uh, Cinebench and Windows Task Manager, it counts this as one core, two threads. 
And that's kind of fishy considering that AMD just recently got really yelled at because of their bulldozer architecture, eight core processors not really being eight cores, like their uh, 8150 I think, and others uh, not really being eight cores, so I don't know. I don't know. So if you just surf the web and play games like Delver and Super Meat Boy, which by the way, average 58 FPS. So perfect for little games like that. Also Minecraft didn't do too bad at all. But obviously when a high-end card like the GTX 970 is held back really hard by this thing, it's not that great. You can obviously tell. So obviously not a gaming CPU. However, we might end up seeing her again be the star of an HTC PC build. So that was the conclusion. How do I end this video off? Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I do will do things. I might. If you will follow me, I do have some videos coming up that will benefit from you following me on Twitter. Do a bit of a Twitter blitz, if that's what it's called. So, that's fun. Also, have a great day.